Welcome to the Omni Access WLAN Stellar Express video training. At the end of the course, the participant will be able to identify Stellar AP components, install a wireless network based on the Stellar AP, describe and set up the available options for the deployment of Stellar access points. This course is for anyone installing a Stellar AP and covers simple to more advanced deployment with options. There are no prerequisites. In this module, you'll learn about the Stellar AP and how to connect it to your network. Traditional wireless solutions are not suited to SMB environments. They require a large investment in resources to be implemented and maintained. The cluster-based solution used by the Stellar AP resolves these issues. You also keep the same level of features as a controller-based solution. Unbox the access point. In the packing box, you will also find an installation guide, two ceiling rail adapters, and the license agreement. For this setup, prepare your Stellar AP and an OmniSwitch 6350 and an Ethernet cable. Connect the Ethernet port on the access point to the port on the OmniSwitch 6350. The access point will be powered by the OmniSwitch through Power Over Ethernet, or PoE. Check the LEDs on the front of the access point. In this module, you will learn the first steps to setting up a Stellar AP. The objectives of this module is to provide the required information on how to set up a Stellar AP and access the AP's interface. Before installing the AP1101, make sure that you have the following. Ethernet cables of the required length to connect the AP to the OmniSwitch, a power over Ethernet source such as the OmniSwitch 6350 or a PoE adapter, a DHCP server. Connect the access point to the power source. If you have followed the previous modules, the access point is already connected to a port of the OmniSwitch 6350. You can also use a PoE power adapter to power the access point. After the access point powers up, it will do a DHCP request. If the DHCP server times out or if there is no DHCP server in the network, the access point will be configured with a default IP address of 192.168.1.254. The DHCP client will still run on the access point so that when the DHCP server recovers, the AP can get a valid IP address. Connect the PC or laptop to the access point network. In the Microsoft operating system, click the wireless connection icon in the system tray. 
the wireless network connection box appears. The name of the SSID generated by the access point will be my Wi-Fi plus the last four bytes of the MAC address. Click the My Wi-Fi network and click connect. In this module, you will learn the basic configuration of a Stellar access point. The objectives of this module is to provide information that is required to configure the AP for the first time and generate the two SSIDs, employee and guest. Open a web browser and enter the IP address of the AP, which is 192.168.1.254 by default, followed by the colon 8080. In the logon screen, select the administrator user and use admin for the password. You have reached the setup wizard. Click on next. For better security, you can modify the administrator password. Change and confirm the new password. The access port supports different regulatory domains. Select your region and time zone. A new management network can be created. It will replace the My Wi-Fi network. Create a new network called Management and specify a passphrase of at least eight characters. This is the last step of the wizard. Then log on with your new password. An employee network is a standard Wi-Fi network. It will be used by employees in the organization. Both passphrase or 802.1x based authentication methods are supported for this network type. Employees can access the protected data of an enterprise through the employee network after successful authentication. In the WLAN window, click New. Click Advanced to configure the advanced parameters. Name the network Employee. Check that the security level is set to Personal. We will use a passphrase authentication method. Configure the passphrase and confirm it. At the end of the setup, click on Save. The guest wireless network is created for guests, visitors, contractors, and any non-employee users who will use the enterprise Wi-Fi network. Captive portal or passphrase-based authentication methods can be set for guest wireless network. Typically, a guest network is unencrypted, but you can change it in the creation wizard. In the WLAN window, click New. Click Advanced to configure the advanced parameters. Name the network Guest. Set the security level to Open and enable Captive Portal. At the end of the setup, click Save. Captive Portal must be activated on the access point. Scroll down. Click Access and then click Authentication. This will open a new window. Click the Captive Portal switch to activate it. Click Add and enter a username and password. Start Date and End Date. A new guest has been created in the internal database of the AP. Open your Wi-Fi connection manager and select the employee SSID. Click on connect and enter employee for the passphrase.
you are now connected to the requested network and you can start browsing. Open your Wi-Fi connection manager and select the guest SSID. Open your browser and type in any URL. You are forwarded to a captive portal asking you to accept the condition of use. Enter the logon and password guest you have created earlier on in the access point. You are now connected to the requested network and can start browsing. In this module, you will learn the advanced configuration of a Stellar Access Point. The objectives of this module is to provide information required for the advanced configuration of the Stellar Access Point. Advanced Configurations allows the administrator to customize and monitor the Stellar AP. To change the AP name, click AP in the AP tab. In the Detailed Information tab, click Edit, rename the AP, and click Save. To save the AP's IP address, edit the IP mode. By default, the AP gets its IP address from a DHCP server. For manual configuration, click the static and enter the new IP address. The net mask and the default gateway. If you want to manage the AP, click the AP tab. Click the config link to review the configuration that will be pushed to the AP. Click the firmware link to upgrade the firmware of the AP. You can either select local firmware with image file or FTP the firmware with image file URL. Click the reboot link to reboot the AP. Confirm the reboot by pressing OK. In a cluster, you can specify a single IP address to manage the multi AP cluster. The AP is automatically provisioned on a shadow interface of the AP that takes the role of the primary virtual controller. To specify name and IP address for the virtual controller, click System and then the General link. Enter the name in the Group Name text box and the IP address in the Group Management IP text box. Use a relevant name for the location for better maintenance. And give your cluster a unique ID with the group ID value. When a new AP is connected to the network, it must first be configured before it can join a cluster. Connect to the default SSID broadcasted by the AP and open a web browser. Enter the IP address of the AP or the URL mywifi-enterprise.com. The web browser will redirect the traffic. Log in with the default password admin and provide a new password. Choose the country code and region and create a new management SSID.
Once the wizard is completed, the My Wi-Fi SSID will no longer be operational. Connect to the Management SSID created during the wizard process. Go back to the web browser and use the IP address of the AP or the MyWiFiEnterprise.com SSID. Log in with the password created earlier. Go to System, then General. From here, enter the exact same parameters as those used on the previous AP. The group name and group management IP should be identical, but the different location. Once the configuration has been saved, go to System General and configure the group ID so that it matches the group ID defined earlier. Check the AP panel. The new AP should appear in the joining state. If an AP firmware does not match the version of the primary virtual manager, the firmware link will be displayed in red. When the new AP has joined the cluster, the client, connected to the management SSID, will be disconnected. The local configuration of the AP is replaced by the configuration from the primary virtual manager. The management SSID configured on the AP will be removed so that the client has no management SSID to connect to. To join the cluster, connect to the management SSID created on the first AP. Notice that the management SSID created on the other AP is no longer in the SSID list. Open a web browser and enter an IP address of the primary AP. Log in and check the AP panel. Two APs now belong to the cluster. One has been elected primary and the second assumed the secondary role. Any new APs that join the cluster will be members because each cluster has one acting as primary and one AP acting as the secondary. When using a WPA or WPA2 Enterprise SSID, you will need to define an external radio server that will authenticate the users. Click the New link under the WLAN tab and then select Advanced for additional settings. Name your WLAN and select Enterprise in the Security Level option. This will enable WPA or WPA2 Enterprise SSID. Enter the IP address of the radio server and the secret key in the Auth Secret text box. Finalize the WLAN creation by clicking on Save. The Stellar Access Point supports Captive Portal authentication for guest access. Captive Portal displays a web page for guests trying to access the network. First, confirm that your guest WLAN is using the guest network type and that Captive Portal is enabled. Click WLAN, edit your guest WLAN, and check the settings. Then, globally enable Captive Portal on the AP. Click Access and turn on Captive Portal. Users can then be created in the database. Click Authentication. Add a user in the Account tab. Give it a password and set its role to Guest. Alternatively, you can use an access code for user authentication. You can also identify a user from their MAC address or a range of addresses. 
if the MAC address of a user is contained in the MAC range you identified, it will be authenticated. You can also preview and customize the captive portal by clicking Customize Captive Portal. When the user accesses the captive portal, they can enter a username and password or use the access code. A firewall is a system designed to prevent unauthorized internet users from accessing the private network connected to the internet. Firewalls define access rules and monitor all traffic entering or leaving the network, blocking traffic that does not satisfy the security policies. The firewall treats packets based on the first rule matched. To create a firewall policy, click Access and ACL. Add a new ACL and specify the source and destination. The type of traffic you want to match and select the reject or accept action. Finalize the ACL creation by clicking save. RF management is a radio frequency management technology that optimizes WLAN performance, even in networks with high traffic, by dynamically and intelligently choosing the best Wi-Fi channel and transmitting power settings for each AP. To access RF management, open the wireless window and click RF. Select the AP you want to configure by clicking the Edit icon. ACS is Automatic Channel Selection and is activated by default. Disabling it will allow you to manually configure the channel of transmission. APC is Automatic Power Control and is enabled by default. Disabling it will allow you to manually configure the transmit power emissions of the AP. ACS and APC configuration is separate for the 2.4 GB and the 5 GHz radios. One of the most important security features is detecting rogue and interfering APs that can potentially disrupt network operations. In the Wireless Intrusion Detection or WIDS window, you will find the list of all rogue APs and interfering APs detected by your access point. Some of the interfering APs could be legitimate APs. You have the option to trust one or more of these APs so that the security features of your AP1101 will not disrupt legitimate AP traffic. Your AP1101 will create a whitelist with all the legitimate APs. A list of NTP servers can be managed. New NTP servers can be added and the priority of the servers can be set. On the syslog panel, the log level can be defined. Debug All provides the largest quantity of log and Emergent provides a small number of logs, but the most critical ones. A remote log server or syslog server can be configured by providing its IP address. The log file of each AP can be downloaded locally. From the wireless part, performance utilization panel, the background scanning option can be turned on or off. It is highly recommended to leave it on as the Wireless Intrusion Detection System or WIDS feature can only work with this option turned on. The scanning interval and scanning duration defines how long and how often the background scanning will work on the AP. 
During the background scanning duration, no clients can communicate with the AP. It is then recommended to lower this value on crowded APs. The band steering, load balance, and voice and video awareness option can also be turned on or off in this panel. It is recommended to turn these options on as they will improve the radio usage, balancing the clients between APs in the same cluster and avoiding background scanning when voice and video traffic is detected. From the Network tab, the IGMP snooping option can be configured and will optimize multicast traffic. 